I mean, when can you do that? You can empty out your closet and turn it into a grail. I mean, Hey guys, Spidey here. As always, I hope you're having a marvelous day. Have I got a treat for you? One that's going to be really educational, and that is about ComC. ComC is a great website, and I'm not going to give away all the details about it. In fact, I have brought in Grant. Grant, how do you say your last name? Westcott? Westcott. Yeah, that's right. Grant Westcott, Director of Business and Development at ComC. Hey, it's good to have you on the channel today, my friend. Great to be here, Justin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I feel like I've known the best kept secret for a little while now about ComC, but it is time for us to really, you know, give it a great big exposure to the Marvel Card community because you guys are integral in what happens with Marvel Cards. And so why don't you give us a little bit of an introduction on who ComC is? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Justin. Um, so ComC is the, the world's largest trading card consignment marketplace. Uh, we have millions of different cards that are available to buy from thousands of different sellers. Uh, it's all in one place. And, um, you know, our motto, we've always been about optimizing joy. We're all about bringing, op bringing joy to collectors. And that basically goes like this. You've got cards that are in your collection that don't bring you joy. Mm -hmm. but those, jo those cards can bring joy to somebody else. This to make it as easy as possible to sell those cards and in return, you'll be able to find other cards that bring you joy. And that's basically the ComC ecosystem in a nutshell. That sounds marvelous if you ask me. I know that I have a ton of cards. You know, I like to open up boxes and you know, with, with boxes comes lots of base cards and some inserts, Absolutely. but if you're a character collector or a particular set collector like me, then you end up having stacks and stacks of cards that can be difficult to think through the process of listing each one, or even trying to do sets and sell them on various platforms. Can you tell me a little bit more on why ComC might be the best place for those cards? Like you said that, that you know, you enjoy all the cards, but they don't all bring you joy, so to speak, but you could put them in a place where someone else might be able to enjoy them, to be able to acquire them. So tell me a little more about that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, you know, like I said, we make it as easy as possible uh, to, to get these cards up for sale. That mm. means that you're gonna send those cards in and we take images of the front and back of every single card that you send in. Uh, we identify it in our catalog. We'll look at the condition and kind of assess it for condition to make sure that, you know, all that's called out and you get to control all your own prices. So uh, you get to do all the fun stuff, um, you know, listen for sale, respond to offers, things like that. Uh, and we do all the hard stuff that nobody wants to do, right? So you're taking, you're telling me that I can take all these extra cards that I have lying around, package them up, send them straight to you guys. And then you're gonna take the time to image each individual card and make it where I can price each one and then when someone purchases it, you'll handle all the shipping and all the packing for it? Yep, that's right, that's right. As soon as you sell a card, you get paid right then and there. So I can take these cards that I have here and actually turn them into cards that I really want, mm -hmm. right? Or turn them into money, either way. But what I loved about what you said is that anyone following the channel knows that I just dislike shipping. I don't like any part of it, really. The, the packaging, the going to the, you know, the store, and I love my UPS people, but it just takes a lot of time out of the day, keeping up with the addresses and all that kind of stuff. This just gives me one place to send them. People can acquire them there, and then you guys take care of the packaging and shipping. And I love that. See, honestly, we've heard from many, many people over the years that the only reason that they're able to enjoy the hobby is because they use our service and they can, they can buy and sell that way. Well, let's talk about how they use it. Can we get into the steps of how to start the process of taking these cards that I have stacked up and piled here and getting them to ComC? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the first thing you're gonna need, of course, is a ComC account. Uh, okay. And if you don't have one yet, totally free to sign up. It only takes a minute. Uh, and uh, once you have that account, uh, just go ahead and sign in and you can so, go to your dashboard. So we're gonna go to just comc.com? That's right, yep. And mm -hmm. right there from the homepage, you can click on register that will take you to sign up for an account. Awesome, so now we've got our account. What's our next step? Once you have your account, of course, you're gonna sign in and that'll take you right to your dashboard. Your dashboard's gonna have everything. It's gonna have everything for buying, everything for selling, anything you wanna do, it's right there. One of the coolest things I think about ComC is how you guys are directly connected to Upper Deck. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? 
Yeah. Uh, so we've been we've been working with Upper Deck for uh, six or seven years now, um, and uh, we are the backbone of their EPAC program. I'm sure a lot of your audience is uh, well aware of Upper Deck EPAC, uh, but um, basically, in a nutshell, uh, EPAC is a, a, a way to go on and and buy virtually packs and boxes of cards and mm -hmm. open them right there in your account. And you can collect them right on your EPAC account. Uh, but one of the unique things about ComC's involvement is that we actually uh, do all of the processing, all of the storage, all the fulfillment of Upper Deck EPAC. And a unique thing about that is it allows you to instantly transfer cards that you want to sell over into your ComC account where you can sell them, you can send them to auction, uh, you can even add them into you know some of the ones that you want to keep, you can add them to a shipment and just combine your shipment into one with all the cards that you purchased from Com C. So pretty, uh, pretty unique thing. I think a lot of people out there actually think that we are Upper Deck, but we are a different company. <laughs> uh, but we've been working with them for about, yeah, like I said, seven years uh, doing this pretty cool program. Yeah, so you guys, when you say you're the backbone, that means you're the ones who are housing the cards and imaging them from the beginning. So when you see your card on Upper Deck, it's Com C that's, that's handling that. So you can transfer, you know, from one website to the next, your Marvel cards from e Upper Deck Pack to Com C to begin the process of, of selling your cards if you'd like. Yep, that's right, that's right. And it, it only takes minutes. I mean, like I said, it's basically instantaneous and it's the same experience. You just list them for sale. So we have our account now. And the great thing about having an account at Com C is it is free. There's no cost to have an account, whether you're shipping cards or transferring from Upper Deck Pack. Now we want to say we have these cards at home that we talked about that we're shipping in and we have our account. What's next? Yeah. So once you have your account, um, you're going to go ahead and click on start new submission. And that's going to take you into what we call our submission wizard step by step guide. It's pretty straightforward, but we're going to walk through it on the way of creating your first submission. I love step by step guides, especially on YouTube. Like it helps accomplish things that you didn't know were possible. First thing you'll do is you click on start new submission and that's going to take you to a screen where you're going to uh, verify your return shipping address just make sure all that information is correct mm -hmm. and click continue from there mm -hmm. it's going to take you to all the service levels that we offer and we offer three different fixed price service levels and one auction uh, direct to auction service level as well so what are um, the points for the different service levels why have different service levels some of it's going to be about time it's about how quickly you want to get your cards onto the website and then we also have a couple service levels based upon price points. Can you detail those service levels for us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Our entry level service level is called standard. Mm -hmm. And for 50 cents a card, uh, we get we get those cards up into your account within 16 weeks. And that's up to 16 weeks. Sometimes it's a lot faster than that, but that's how long it takes to get those cards into your account. If you want it a little bit faster than that, then you can choose our select service level. That is only two weeks for $1 per card. And a lot of times it's even done quicker than two weeks. I think and in a world where our cards being graded take years <laughs> at a time. Yeah, no, but I know, I know. 16 weeks doesn't sound as long and two weeks is certainly sounds fast. Yeah, and, and with 16 weeks, like I said, it does get in there uh, quicker sometimes, but I wouldn't use that service for something that you want to get your card into your account quickly, right? So yeah. a lot of times we want to get certain things are time sensitive, certain sets just came out, they're really popular. I would use uh, one of our faster service levels for cards like that. But standard is great for that older stack of cards that you have there that is just, you know, maybe it's just base cards. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, you want to get them into Com C this so you can have a way to monetize them. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. I usually like to say, you know, up to maybe five or ten dollar cards that you're gonna see selling for up to five or ten bucks. That's a really good service level for those. Uh, there's no rush to to sell those. You're gonna get the best uh, you know, the best profit margins with that service level. Beautiful. So we've got standard and then we have select. Are there any other service levels? Yeah, so uh, the highest end service level is called Elite. Um, I, I would recommend for uh, cards $50 or more, even though I'm, I'm guilty of sending in cards that are $20 or more to, to Elite because I just love the, the images that we provide. We take really nice uh, high resolution images 
uh, with our elite service. And another thing about that is for $2 a car, that it also unlocks auctions. Uh, so you can send any of those cards to auction at any time with no additional, no additional fee. So our elite service is $2. It takes up to two weeks. I would say it typically takes less than a week to get an elite. So elite can be sent to auction. So where exactly do you auction your cards? We have a good partnership with eBay. We've been doing that for a number of years. And uh, when you send your card to auction, we create a nice title for it. We make sure that everything looks really good. And then we'll schedule it uh, at, at peak hours of the day to make sure that you get the, the, most, uh, the most out of that auction. So you're saying all those cards I see on eBay that have Com C in the image, this is how that's happening. Yep, yep, that's right. And you don't have to do anything. You just click a button, you send it, and uh, and it should be listed within a week. Do I get paid immediately like you talked about earlier if it's on Com C? Yeah, so you're paid immediately. Uh, anytime something sells uh, at fixed price on Com C, uh, we also cross list to eBay, uh, all of our fixed price. So they're not just auctions, uh, everything. Everything that's on Com C, we also do cross list over to eBay. As soon as something sells, we we pay you in store credit. With auctions, you know, of course, we still have to wait for the buyer to pay. As soon as the buyer pays, that money goes straight into your account and you can use it. So you're saying all these cards that I have sitting around me, mm -hmm. I can ship them once to Com C, and you will do the work of imaging them, titling them, getting them posted onto eBay, eBay and Com C's website. And when they sell, you will handle the shipping and the process of getting it to the buyer. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that sounds marvelous, my friend. Well, as a lot of people know, I'm primarily a Spider-Man collector, but yet I've opened tons of boxes on the channel. So this is going to be a great outlet for me to get some of these cards that have stacked up that I do want to sell, but the process of imaging and selling each one just is, is too much for my schedule. So what I'm gonna be sending, I've got some 2016 Marvel Masterpieces that are gonna go through the Elite uh, process. I've got some 2020 Marvel Masterpieces that will also be more of that Elite because these are $100 cards. Mm -hmm. But for the standard, I've got some lower end graded cards that I'm not in a big of a hurry to, to get submitted. However, I do have a ton of base cards that I'm gonna send through this, the standard uh, submission process because you know I've opened a ton of Spider-Man metal and the 100 and lower low series cards are not on Upper Deck's E-Pack. This right. is a way for me to be able to get these online so people can buy those cards to complete their full set. So I'm really excited about all three standard tiers here because I got cards that fit each one of them. Yeah, that's perfect. And one thing, you know, I, I really don't want to fail to mention is lead service level and with our select service level, we have this really cool program. It's an ongoing promotion called Fresh Pulls and any any sets that are three months old uh, or less, uh, those cards can be submitted to your uh to your to your account for 50 percent off of the fees 50 percent off of the cost of normal submission that's right yeah so so any card that you would have normally sent into standard it would make sense to send in select anything from a, a newer set well this is great news for breakers who are breaking a lot of new product mm -hmm. the urgency is to get those cards in as quickly especially the base cards right yeah Go ahead absolutely. And send those in you're gonna get 50 percent off of the submission and that's just kind of a sweetener because we all know that that's the best time to sell those cards as well so we want to make it really easy uh and make sense for you to get all those cards into your account as quickly as possible to sell it to people that to sell those cards to people that are looking for them that's beautiful i think that's fantastic it's something that the hobby really needs to know now is there a cost when i'm transferring cards from epac to com c no, so transferring the e transferring from your EPAC account is is free. There's just no reason not to do that. It's, it's so nice to be able to uh, to use EPAC to open cards that conveniently, and uh, and anything that you're not looking to hold on to just to instantly transfer it to your account and and, and get some more money to maybe break break a few more cards, right? Well, I'm thinking about my own EPAC account, which probably has over a thousand cards just sitting there. Yeah, well, I need to transfer them. I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Kind of getting back to the, the submission wizard, uh, 
when you choose the the service levels that you want, it sounds like you've got cards that you're sending into elite and select and standard. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah. So if you go ahead and uh, select uh, the check boxes next to each one of those and then continue. Now that you've uh, selected your service levels, mm -hmm. we're going to go on to the next screen and it's going to ask a few questions about those submissions. And we're really not asking a lot. I know that, uh, you know, if you're submitting for uh, cards to go to grading, a lot of times you have to identify each and every one of those cards. Uh, yeah, on that is card. really a pain having to identify each and every card. And just to think that I can send as much bulk as I want and I really only have to identify the group really takes a lot of pain out of shipping cards to comp c yeah absolutely and uh you know we're, we ask we ask a few questions just really to keep track of your submission help you keep track of of your submission um but for each one of the service levels that you have uh, selected it's going to ask you for how many cards that you're sending in mm -hmm. it's going to ask you the type of item that you're sending in and so if you select the drop down, it'll say graded comic books, graded oversized cards, graded uncirculated cards, so on and so forth. And for each one of those groups of cards, you're going to uh, choose the quantity and then provide the estimated declared value for that, for that submission group. And just to touch really quickly on what a group is, that's really just a physical uh, group of items. So if you have a, box of cards that you're submitting or if you have some graded cards that you've wrapped up in some bubble you know in some bubble wrap those are all going to be physically separate groups of cards you're going to want to have a piece of paperwork for each one of those so each group is going to be each bundle that you've bubble wrapped and are yep. packaged but you can have more than one group in one box that's being shipped correct that's right yeah you can have more than one group per service level you can have more than one service level per box really as much as you can as, as much as you can safely and securely fit into a box you just get that all into one shipment and so for each group of cards that you've got fill out group paperwork for those cards once you're done giving the quantity the type and the estimated value you'll click next and that will take us to the second to last screen and you're just going to be selecting a submission center for where your shipment is going. And uh, if you click on that, you're gonna see that ComC headquarters is right at the top. That's typically the one you're gonna choose. Uh, if you're in the, in the greater Seattle area, you can drop off at our headquarters. Oh, and, that can be uh, useful. Yeah, that's that's really useful for, for, for the locals here in the Pacific Northwest, or we even have a lot of people that are passing through and uh, they'll bring their submissions with them. But one other really cool thing about this is we go to card shows and and uh, and comic cons uh, throughout the throughout the year, and so if you have your submission with you, you can come by the booth, you can drop that off, and that'll save you on all the shipping costs and all of that, even wow. even wrapping all wrapping everything up. So we'll take care of those for you uh, if you have. So you can. So at. you're saying I could literally go to card shows, mm -hmm. buy cards. And then drop them off at Com C on the way yep. out of town, yep. and then have them in a place to sell them for either at Com C's website or to put on eBay, and you'll handle everything. Yep, exactly, exactly. You don't have to bother taking those home with you at all. Oh, that's a game changer. Yep. So in this case, Justin, I know that you're not in the area, and uh, we're just going to be shipping to the Com C headquarters. So mm -hmm. for each of the uh, service levels, you can select that, and then we'll go to the last screen. And that is going to show us the paperwork uh, that we that we filled out. So you go ahead and print these submission slips. And they're going to be these strips of paper that you're going to cut out one by one. And all you're going to do is take those submission slips and you're going to match those up to those submission groups that we created earlier. Those are all those are all set to go. Awesome. So we've now organized what groups of cards we're going to be submitting. So now it's time to actually do the packing. Do you have any tips for packing our cards? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is when you put cards into a box, put some spacers on both sides of the box that you're loading cards into. You don't want the cards running into that edge. You want to have a little bit of padding so that shipment is nice and safe. When you are putting the cards into the box, 
Make sure that they are snug. They're not moving around at all, but don't make them too tight to where it's damaging the cards. Once your box is loaded, loaded up, put the submission slip on top of the cards and then take a piece of bubble wrap and put that on top. There's a little bit of a gap top of card boxes and the lid itself. And so you just wanna put a nice piece of bubble wrap there so that everything stays safe and secure into that, uh, into that box. So simply stated, you wanna fill in all the space and you don't want the cards up against the cardboard. That's right. You should be able to take that box and shake it and not hear anything. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. So if you can't hear anything, then when it's shipping, it's it's not moving around and that's what that's the goal. That's what we want. So when we're sending our cars to Com C, do you prefer them in penny sleeves or top loaders? And what's the best practice? Yeah. So for our standard and our select service level, I prefer that they come in penny sleeves. You can also ship them raw, but we prefer for the better for, for better protection to ship those in penny sleeves. If you do ship cards into those service levels in top loaders, there is an additional charge to have those removed. It's 50 cents a card to do that. And so we really recommend that you use penny sleeves and there's no additional charge to remove cards from penny sleeves. When you're shipping to Elite, we strongly recommend that you use card savers or top loaders or some form of protection for those cards because typically those are gonna be of greater value and we really don't want anything to happen in, in transit. These cars have to be imaged. So there's labor in taking them out of the top loaders or card savers or one touches. So with those base cards or those five to $10 cards, if that's what you choose to send standard, penny sleeves work just fine. But in the higher end, higher dollar value cards, that condition is you know incredibly important. Those you can keep in a uh, top loader or one touch because you're sending the leap, there's not an additional charge. That's correct, yep. Grant, do you recommend that for cards that are top loaded that there's a piece of tape on the top loader? Oh, for sure. So uh, one thing that's really common uh, if you're shipping cards uh, is in top loaders is those cards can easily slide out of those top loaders, unfortunately. And so putting a piece of painter's tape over the top or putting them in a team bag is another is another option. We'll keep the card from sliding out of the top of the top loader. And so when you have those top loaded cards, Justin, you know, they do make they do make boxes for top loaders, but a lot of times we don't have those, uh, and so we kind of have to, have to make do with what we have. Uh, what I would do is I would take a, a stack of top loaded cards and wrap those in bubble in bubble wrap and make kind of a little burrito out of those. Just mm -hmm. tape them nice and secure in there with their paperwork, and that's going to do the trick uh, uh, for keeping them safe in transit. Excellent. Well, now that our cards are properly packaged and ready to ship. What do we put on the outside of the box? Yeah, so a uh, good question. You're gonna go and you're gonna print a, a shipping label. This is uh, typically from USPS, FedEx, UPS, something like that. One thing I'll recommend, not to plug USPS at all, but I would say that their flat rate mailers are perfect. We, we get many, many flat rate mailers uh, every single day. And that's because just for one cost, people will fill those up all the way with cards, you know, safely, of course, but they'll fill them up all the way with cards and they don't have to worry too much about the weight. And a lot of times, you know, cards can be pretty heavy. So that's really mm -hmm. gonna be the best the best option is, is using a USPS flat rate priority mailer. All right, Grant, so now we have our cards. We've got them packaged, they're in the groups, they're labeled, we got them in the box. We're ready to print the shipping label to send it to ComC's headquarters. But is there anything we need to do to prepare our ComC account for these cars to arrive? Yeah, so if you uh, if you haven't done any buying or selling on ComC before, it's it's likely that you don't have any store credit in your account. And so from your dashboard where we were at earlier, right underneath where it says available store credit, there's a little link to say purchase store credit. And that's going to take you to a page where you can choose the amount. Uh, we have a few specified amounts, but you can also choose a custom amount and make sure that you just add enough store credit so that uh, so that your submission fees are gonna be covered. So the way that we pay for our shipment is that we load store credit and then you guys collect that once the cards are delivered. That's correct. So we're not gonna charge any submission fees until your cards are deposited into your account and we'll take those submission fees at that time. In the event that I didn't load enough store credit based on the submission, what happens then? It's going to take your account balance a negative a little bit. And all you have to do is log into your account and, and deposit enough 
for uh, to get into a positive balance. And at that point, those cards will deposit into your account. And you'll be able to price them for sale. It's so all it does is push my submission for every day that I don't bring the account to positive. But once it's positive, it moves forward to get those cards deposited into my inventory on Comp C. Yeah, that's right. Excellent. All right, so I've shipped my cards in this scenario and they're now arriving at Comp C. What happens next? Yeah, so uh, as soon as they arrive and we entered into the system, we're going to send you a, an email just confirming that they got there. We'll give you some information on the quantity that showed up and, and everything like that. But after that point, um, you know, we talked about the lead times before and uh, within that when, within that time, you're going to start getting deposits into your account. The standard service level, like we talked about, it can be a maximum of 16 weeks. But a lot of times, some of those cards are actually going to deposit into your card, uh, into your account much sooner than that. It's just one thing to kind of keep an eye out for is you might get some of your cards into your account this week, some of them next week, and you can price those cards as soon as they're added to your account. All right, Grant, all those cards that didn't quite bring me as much joy as what I collect are now at ComC ready to be sold and inventoried into my ComC account. What happens now? Yeah, so once those cards arrive at ComC, we're gonna send you an email. Uh, it's just gonna let you know that everything showed up and it's gonna give you an estimated due date. And uh, as we complete those cards, they're gonna get added into your account. As soon as they're added into your account, you can set asking prices on those cards. You can start fielding offers for those cards and, and hopefully get to selling. Beautiful, I love it. Now some of the cards sell and now I have store credit. What do I do next? So once you get store credit, you can really use that toward anything on Com C. Uh, a lot of times I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna find cards that I want uh, and I'll, I'll go shopping. I think right now we've got something like 30 million cards on Com C uh, listed Holy for sale. Holy smokes, 30 so, million. Uh, a lot to choose from uh, for sure. I think I wanna say almost a million uh, Marvel cards right now, last time I checked. Wow. Yeah. So um, there's a lot to there's a lot to choose from, uh, and you can you can buy cards with that money. You can you can take that money and pay for more more submissions, and anything that's left over, uh, you can cash out. Um, there's only a 10% cash out fee for anything you want to take off of the websites. We should probably talk a little bit about the transaction fees. Anytime you sell a card at fixed price, it's a 5% transaction fee. You get to keep the rest. If you sell a card at auction, it's only a three and a half percent transaction fee and you get to keep the rest. Well, that sure seems to compare quite favorably to other, you know, selling platforms that I'm aware of. Yeah. And I, what I really enjoy is the flexibility uh, of it. I don't typically cash my store credit out because I find other cards that I want to buy. And that's really what the service is designed for. If you keep it in the ecosystem and if you keep it, uh, keep your store credit on Com C. I think you're going to have the best experience finding other cards that you want to want to add to your own personal collection. I believe I understand what you're saying. The idea is that you take these cards you don't want and you convert them into cards you do want and then you ship them home. Because what is the fee to ship home? Yeah, so we do have some different uh, options as far as what services you want to choose. But typically you're going to get a shipment for only $4.99 and you can add as many cards as you want to that shipment. That's the most economical. And if you're not, not in any rush to get those cards uh, back home to you, it'll take a few weeks, but you'll get those cards uh, for only $4.99. And then we have some faster options as well. So you're saying the only fee is to ship it home? Yeah, that's right. Well, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's, it's been a really good service for, for collectors that don't have the time to uh, to sell their own cards and deal with the shipping and all of that. They really can just sell the cards that they're, that they're not interested in and buy some others that they are. And, and next thing you know, they're, they're showing up on your doorstep. I just love the idea of taking hundreds, if not thousands of these cards that I don't really want and converting them into tens, if not hundreds of cards that I really do want. Yeah, That's I mean, I like that you said tens. I mean, sometimes I like to roll all those cards into like maybe one or two really nice ones. And so it yeah. gives me, I mean, when can you do that? You can empty out your closet and turn it into a grail. I mean, that's just, uh, the, it's just something that you can't really do anywhere else. It's a beautiful way to focus your collection without all the labor, the intense labor of shipping that comes with trying to do it yourself. Right, right.
So Com C really is a partner on how to collect your cards in a way that really makes sense and brings you joy. But that's what we're about, optimizing enjoyment. Maximize what you care about, minimize what you don't. Love it. What's up, my friends? I have some marvelous news for you. ComC and the Spidey His channel has joined together to give you a discount on the cards that you're submitting to ComC using the Select and Elite services. Remember to write Spidey Hits 30 on your submission slips to receive a 30% discount. This is also on top of the Fresh Pulls discount that you get right now, 50% on submissions of cards that have just recently been released. That's big news with Marvel Upper Deck looking to release new sets here in the next coming months. So remember, write Spidey Hits 30 on all your select and elite submission slips. Thank you.